Well, here we are a year later, and uh, if you watched my video on searching for Kalanthi Saboldi last year, it is Golden Week again, or almost Golden Week, and uh, the Kalanthi are in bloom, and so I thought it'd be fun to come out and try it again, see if I can find any plants. I'm sure I can. Uh, I'm hoping to find more diversity in orchids this time. Last time I only found... Uh, Believe it or not, the Calanthus saboldi. I didn't even find a more common discolor or any of the other common species. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to check out some new valleys. Body willing, so far I'm doing okay. Chugged up the mountain today. Probably shouldn't have had those two beers last night, but I'm surviving. <laughs> so we'll go check it out. Found a nice little creek here. Gonna try going up it. It's um, near a campground where there's a lot of people and a lot of activity, but I think further up in there where people aren't going, there's a good chance. So, let's go check it out. Well, this little ravine right down here, I came up this thing and it was some rough going down there. But uh, here I am up in a Hinoki plantation, Sugi plantation, and uh, Lo and behold, I'm on a trail, so this is a bust. If there are any plants in here, they were taken long ago, so go find a more remote place. Now, this is an old road along this uh, semi-wild river here. It's about as wild as a river gets in these parts. Um, this probably was just amazing uh, orchid territory at one time. But uh, now it's become a little summer vacation spot, so whatever was here is probably gone. Um, I've talked to a lot of old men that were the ones who came in here 30, 40 years ago and cleared these areas out. The plants. See, the river is still quite beautiful. Yeah. So, we're going to go further up above the dam here, below the dam now, and we're going to look for uh, a nice remote valley. We'll find one. Well, I knew I'd see it. Another orchid here. This is a Cymbidium garingi in full bloom up on a little uh, cliff face here, not willing to climb up. I'm going to pan back so you can see it. These are very common orchids in this area. I love these rocky, cliffy hillsides like this. Well, I decided to climb up here to show you these plants up close. Here you can see a double flowered plant. And uh, there's some more over here as well. Two other specimens. That's the original one there. Lots of the wild uh, mountain wisteria in these hills, lighting up the forests. This time of year, beautiful. Well, right here by the side of the road, I happen to look down, and there's a Cremastra appendiculata in bud, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, the old leaf here is uh, finishing up for the year. It's going to go dormant, and there's the new buds for the year. Going to bloom probably about another couple weeks. Well, here we are along the reservoir. Um, I was checking out this valley last year, thinking this might be a good spot. It's deep enough and there's a good forest here, native forest, so I'm going to try it. Here we go. It's tough going up there. I'm probably about a hundred feet above the road here, climbing on these um, wild boar trails to this intense forest. Um, first little gully there 
didn't look very good so I'm uh, making tracks across this one little ridge line to get over to the uh, another gully, a larger one and hopefully that'll have something good in it so cross your fingers well here's the first group that I found all out of flower nearly vertical climb in here this kicks your butt you gotta be really careful too right, I'll keep looking uh, here's a green flowered Arasema serrata just going out of bloom but you can see it also is the variegated leaf type which is kind of nice that's actually quite common here well I am running out of juice I'm uh, up on this extreme slope work my way up here is this little fern glade here this is the general area I was working in last year but so far nothing so Looks like I might, might just get skunked this year. Huh. I'll go figure. Bad year for blooms. Looks healthy enough. Uh, this is definitely one of the plants I saw last year. And there's a smaller one up over here that's been chewed probably by deer. I've seen a lot of deer spore this year. So, anyway, they're still here at least. That's good. And here's the other one that was blooming nicely last year again. Yeah, you can see the old growth from last year, the old stalk. Yeah, it's seed pod, good. Uh, a few fewer flowers this year. I'm going to have to nickname this guy the Old Reliable. I'll see if we can find any more. i got a little bit more energy. Let's see if I can get any more today. Well, I'm going to have to be content with my find so far today. Here you can see these valleys uh, full of this hardwood forest and no doubt up these steep, steep valleys there are plants all up in there, but getting to them, that's the hard part. You know, you would need a lot of time and a lot of energy. And This old man's had enough today, so time to get back on the bike and get home. Well, I decided to uh, come up to a different mountain closer to my home to show you a colony of uh, Calanthe that I've been watching for about 10 years now. And um, right beside me here is a lovely group of uh, Calanthe Takane, which is uh, the natural hybrid between uh, Calanthe Siboldi and Calanthe Discolor. Um, this is a pretty exceptional group uh, and in these local woods there are um, a number of clumps of Discolar and Takane type hybrids. So anyway, uh, since we found so little at the other site, um, I thought it might be fun to go ahead and see what uh, we find here. And of course we'll see lots and lots of Calante and probably uh, also definitely get a view of uh, Cymbidium Garingi. Um, maybe the little Cephalanthera, Cephalanthera erecta. So let's uh, let's have a poke around. Uh, this is a fairly typical color arrangement on this hybrid. Um, it's about halfway between both parents. So it has the yellow of the uh, Siboldi and it has the finer uh, flower parts to the more pointed flower parts. Um, and yet it's also uh, got the red-brown of the uh, Discolar. So, uh, Nice combination on this one. Pretty. Here's a nice little group of uh, Discolar growing. You can see here, even in its native habitat, this plant is given to rots, and uh, sometimes this overwhelms the plants, uh, but most of the time in nature here, they seem to rebound okay. 
There's a fairly large specimen below me on the hillside. We go ahead and pan up here and pull back and you can see the habitat that these plants live in. This is a uh, probably, I don't know, 30 to 40 year old uh, Hinoki and Sugi plantation forest. Pretty good habitat for these guys though. Here's a nice little group of plants that I've been following through the years. Uh, this looks to be a Takane hybrid, even though it's showing mostly discolor traits, which is pretty common actually with um, Takane. Takane can be a, a real wide range of results that can uh, lean towards either parent. A little ways up from the uh, Calanthe colony is this uh, group of uh, Cymbidium garingi, and here's the the mother, <laughs> the big plant. Uh, this is one of the largest clumps I'd seen for a long time in Fukuoka. I've seen bigger ones since, but uh, luckily this one has remained uh, nice and healthy, and uh, we'll go ahead and get a closer look of it here. Uh, this green flowered form is um, actually pretty common in Fukuoka still. Uh, all of the yellow flowered and red flowered ones um, apparently have been collected out of this area. Again the old timers tell me that at one time these hills had a very nice variation in uh, the species but uh, now this is all you see these green ones but I'm glad they're here and, and they seem to grow they're very vigorous they do well here. Oh, we got a little bonus here. Here's a group of uh, 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 Cremastra appendiculata growing uh, next to a creek. And they're not quite in flower yet. I'll see if I can hold on. There might be a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a flower here. I'll go ahead and turn that up so you can see them. Yeah, there's the flower. This odd little thing. It actually is really pretty once you get close to it, but uh, yeah, in about another week or two, these would be fully opening. So uh, not yet, but very close to blooming here. So a little bonus. Okay, well, in these low mountains, we see another species of orchid, a dwarf little thing. This little orchid here called Cephalanthera erecta. You can see it's a very miniature plant, it's standing no more than a few inches tall. What's interesting is that this uh, little green plant, in fact, is a semi-saprophyte, uh, meaning that it derives quite a bit of its nutrition from uh, a, um, I don't know what you would call it, not really a parasitic relationship, but a symbiotic relationship between it and a, a mycorrhizal fungi that lives on the outside of its roots. And without that uh, fungus, this plant will go into decline. So these are quite difficult to try to grow in cultivation, although some people claim that they can keep them alive. I suspect, though, they probably don't live past four or five years at most until uh, the fungus is lost and uh, the plant loses vigor. Well, that's the show for today. Um, on the way home I was lucky enough to come across this wonderful guy, a Japanese Luna Moth. Uh, so all in all, a great way to end a day's adventure.